Today we're going to carry on the recursion story a little more. Many of you, I hope, have seen my initial effort in this direction, which is the recursion video. It's featured stack frames, how recursion is actually done. And the answer delivered back by a factorial will be an integer answer. So I thought what we'd do today is move on to another example, much beloved of Brady. It's called the Fibonacci sequence. He was an Italian gentleman, that's not his real name, that was the nickname he was given. Try and stick to mathematical notation here. The n plus oneth Fibonacci number is defined to be the nth Fibonacci number plus the n minus oneth Fibonacci number. Whereas with factorial, it just followed itself recursively around one strand of recursion. Here, you're adding in a second strand of recursion. So this is sometimes called multiply recursive, whereas factorial will be called singly recursive. But like all recursive definitions of functions, you do need an escape route at the bottom. If you keep on calling yourself, you could go on to infinity. But as you can see here, everything's fine so long as you write down what the first Fibonacci number is and the second one. The second Fibonacci number and the first Fibonacci number are both defined to be one. We can now write down the Fibonacci sequence because it starts off with a one for the first number, a one for the second number. So if I want F3, then I've got to make N be two there. Two plus one is three. So Fibonacci of three is the same as Fibonacci of 2 plus Fibonacci of 1. Both 1, so the answer for F3 is 2. Every Fibonacci number is the sum of the two that immediately precede it. So the next one then is going to be 2 plus 1, 3. The one after that, 3 plus 2, 5, 8, 13, 21. You might think, well, very interesting. But what does that apply to? Why, why should that be so fascinating? Well, it's fascinating, first of all, for the simple reason that in the computer file number file family, some of you will know that the wonderful godfather Brady has already made and got ahead of the game a, a, a video about Fibonacci. He actually had a Fibonacci tartan designed and had it made up. And the rows and the threads that have been used to create this design are based on the Fibonacci sequence. Heaven knows how much it cost him to get it made up, but there it is. As computer scientists, why do we care about Fibonacci? The reason I'm doing this with you is the following. Like factorial, Fibonacci is a recursive function that can be derecursed. You could do it in for loops. Things that can be derecursed are called primitive recursive. So Fibonacci is just another one. Uh, it enables us also to draw pretty pictures, which we'll do in a minute, and I rather like doing that. But having done Fibonacci and factorial, but it'll have to be in a separate video, I then want to say, well, not everything can have the recursion taken out of it. Some things really are recursive. I've actually written a postscript program that will print out the Fibonacci numbers for you, up to the value of Fib10 being 55. We'll put out a link to this program, and those of you who've got Ghost View or Ghost Script set up, try running it. You should get this coming out all right. I can only apologise that I've done it in Helvetica. The thing you've got to be prepared for in PostScript is you're at the mercy of the fonts you have available in your interpreter. Don't blame me if it comes out in boring courier. That tends to be the default when it doesn't have access to the font that's asked for. Or, com or Comic Sans. Or Comic Sans. <laughs> no, it's more likely to be Courier, actually. <laughs> when you look inside the program for that, and I will do very briefly, but absolutely not in detail. First of all, here is my definition of Fibonacci slash Fib. It's going to end death. That's the definition of the Fibonacci function. To head off trouble at the pass, I've even put error messages in it. What I made it do to get those numbers to come out is go around a for loop 10 times. And every time it goes around, it calls up fib. But every time it goes into fib, it calls itself recursively. It gets straight back inside itself. And there we are. Out it comes. It does work absolutely fine. 
But if you're going to start doing recursive stuff in PostScript, then by definition, you've got to have something that corresponds to stack frames, right? And we know how C and Java and things do it. They do it automatically. What about in PostScript? Well, PostScript is wonderful. <laughs> it makes you make your own stack frames, but it gives you a fabulously, uh, what's the word, versatile way of doing it. Basically, in the second line here, this thing, 10 dict begin. And what that means is, get me a dictionary with 10 spaces in it. And if you think that that 10 dict is like saying, give me a stack frame with 10 spaces in it, because I'm going to use it and put values in it and manipulate them all on my own. You'll remember when you look back at the stack frame story in the recursion video, it's great, C does it for you. But the penalty, if you like, is you've got to accept the way it handles the stack frame. Unless you want to get into some most appalling hacking, you'd better not mess with your stack frames. You could end up in an awful mess. Whereas PostScript is basically doing its usual thing. You know, you're a serious program with tons of experience. If you get messed up, you'll soon sort yourself out. I'll let you manipulate the stack frame. Every time we go around recursively into fib, it basically hits 10 dict begin, which says, make me another stack frame. I mean, another recursive instance of Fibonacci. What other things can we do with Fibonacci that make it interesting for mathematicians as well as computer scientists? Well, one of the things that I set many years ago in, in a digital documents course was the following. If you put Fibonacci size boxes together and group them properly, and then you join them up, you can draw some most amazing shapes. This is the Fibonacci spiral. And if you look here, you can see what I'm doing. Once I've got the basic Fibonacci recursive function working, I built on top of it extra routines. And this is the beauty of PostScript. You not only get the stack, you get the recursion, you get the stack frame, but you can draw two dimensional pictures as well. So what I got it to do was to go around and every time it visited Fib and got an answer like one, draw a box of unit size. And then the next box along just to its left is also of side one. And of course the secret is knowing where to attach the next box. I've attached the square of side two directly to the south as it were of the two boxes of side one. And then the three box gets attached to the east side and then it goes up north and then it goes west. And as you go around you get one, one, two, three. When you've stacked your boxes correctly you go into them and you draw an arc across each of the boxes and I've chosen to do it at this time in an anti-clockwise direction and you end up with this beautiful looking spiral known as the Fibonacci spiral. It's an approximation to a well-known mathematical object called the logarithmic spiral. We'd like to thank Audible.com for sponsoring this Computerfile video. They've got loads of books online to choose from. Go to audible.com slash Computerfile and there's a chance to download one and try them out for free. Uh, today I'd like to recommend Where's My Jetpack? Uh, it's a question that's uh, plagued me since watching films as a child. Where are the hover cars and everything else? Um, what happened to the science fiction that we expected the future to turn out to be? So go over to audible.com slash Computerfile. Maybe you could try that one as your freebie. Uh, thanks once again to them for sponsoring this Computerfile video.